Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Farms Not Farms podcast. I'm here today with a very special guest. If you'd be so kind to introduce yourself for all the people in the world who may not yet know of you for some reason. <laughs> okay, well, I am uh, Danny Danko. Actually, uh, Dan Vinkovetsky. Danny Danko is a pen name, but uh, that's what I'm known as. So, uh, yeah, Danny Danko. I was uh, the senior cultivation editor at High Times Magazine for uh, 18 years, from 2002 to 2018, and uh, uh, author of a couple of books and uh, host of a podcast. Awesome. So you said you were um, working with High Times until 2018. What are you doing now? Yeah, well, I'm working on a new magazine called Northeast Leaf Magazine. Uh, we are part of Leaf Nation. So uh, they've been around for 10 years doing Northwest Leaf. Uh, they have a number of other publications as well. California Leaf, Alaska Leaf, Maryland Leaf, uh, and uh, Calif I mentioned California, Oregon Leaf. Uh, and we, uh, after parting ways with High Times, uh, met up with uh, the folks behind uh, Northwest Leaf and all the whole, you know, all the leaves and uh, decided to start up Northeast Leaf. And they were awesome. They gave me uh, the opportunity to put together a team, uh, mostly former High Times uh, friends and, and staffers to put together this new magazine. And it's been it's been a pleasure. It's been exciting. We're about almost a year into uh, the Northeast Leaf and it's a monthly publication. It's free. It's available in the eight states of the Northeast and uh, mm. yeah, very exciting. Awesome. And it's, and it's strictly cannabis focused? Yes. I mean, cannabis, hemp, uh, you know, it's about uh, the medical scene in the states uh, where we only have uh, medical as well and, and uh, uh, rec where we have it. So we have Massachusetts and uh, Maine uh, soon to be obviously, uh, you know, New, New Jersey, New York just just flipped, <laughs> and uh, we're hoping Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island. So that's our region, and uh, it's changing very rapidly. So we at Northeast Leaf, we just want to be the voice of the uh, community, and to uh, just inform people about what's going on with the industry, with the laws. Uh, with the medical scene, all of it. Awesome. Being from the Northeast, I, you know, love that you are representing and, uh, you know, shining the light in a place where it's obviously um, progressing quickly and more and more people are coming on board. And obviously for a long time now, people have been asking for this. So thank you for doing your part for so long. What got you into wanting to be uh, or, or just being a journalist for the cannabis movement? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I started off really, uh, you know, more of a, a you know, importer, exporter kind of <laughs> uh, and, a, and a cultivator. Uh, and I wasn't really a journalist. I, I had gone to college. I learned to write um, at BU. I, I studied sociology. So I wrote papers and things like that. And I read a lot of news. Uh, but I didn't really come from a journalism background. I, I was really just interested in cannabis. And then once I started working at High Times, uh, I wasn't an editor or a writer. I was just like answering the phone and breaking down boxes and uh, working with the subscription department and that kind of thing. Uh, and just eventually just decided why not uh, start writing if I, you know, uh, I think it was Kyle Pishman told me, you know, you know how to grow and you know how to write. Uh, that's really all you need to be, you know, the, all the qualifications you need to uh, participate. And um, mm. so little by little, I just started uh, contributing to the magazine. And, and over time, that that turned into a full time gig and, and then an editor editorial ship. And, you know, what's cool about it is you get to travel all over the world, uh, visiting other people's gardens and getting to see all the different ways that people grow. Um, so rather than just having one technique that you're teaching you're learning that there's there's lots of different ways to grow the plant um and uh you know and just being able to expand on that was very helpful and visiting all the different places was was a unique experience particularly when people weren't doing grow tours and things like that back in the day for sure and are, you're from new york city or or what i'm actually from uh, massachusetts from boston area oh great um, I was born in Russia <laughs> and then, mm. uh, you know, my family um, immigrated to 
the United States. And we lived kind of all over, all over for a while. We lived in Texas and settled in uh, the Boston area when I was about 12 years old. Uh, so I grew up there. Uh, and then once I graduated from BU, I moved to New York in, I guess, around 95. Uh, and that's kind of when it, it went from, you know, a closet grow to a warehouse grow kind of situation because, you know, you have to survive and uh, be able to live in New York. And uh, that was the heyday of the, the delivery services and, and you know, the, the days when you could get a, a pretty good amount of money for high quality cannabis. Mm. And that was for, for those of us who are in the younger generation, that was all black market stuff oh yeah no. fully yeah. <laughs> uh, underground very very risky you know growing in in any city uh is not easy and mm. you know, with this with the smell and and being having to you know hustle the equipment in and out of buildings where you're sharing buildings with people and uh it, it, it's not easy it's a lot easier in a rural area than it is in an urban area to pull off and especially when you're harvesting and, and trying to support suppress the smell of a, of a big harvest is not easy very risky. so what is it like being involved with some like an organization like high times while at the same time doing what you're talking about i mean obviously it must have a, a different level of stress that comes along with representing to the world as you know as well as uh doing what you got to do <laughs> yeah for sure i mean during the period of overlap when i was like both growing and you know working for the magazine and traveling and all of that uh, definitely very stressful, but at a certain point, uh, the job sort of took over, uh, which is funny because originally I got the job to sort of be a cover job for what I was doing in the underground and ultimately uh, had to give up on the growing for a while because I was traveling so often. I mean, almost mm. every month I'd be gone for a week or a weekend and you really can't grow successfully uh, and go away that often. Talk about uh, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, a, a successful grower is typically a hermit. You know, they spend <laughs> out, most of their time at home, uh, a lot of the time in the grow room looking at their plants and uh, it's really solitary work. And it, it, it's, uh, you know, the, basically the, the long story short is eventually I kind of had to uh, scale way back down <laughs> on the growing and uh that definitely contributed to uh reducing the, the stress level and at a certain point it's like you know it was like everything i've done is way in the past uh as far as that's certainly. concerned and now i'm free to say and do whatever i want because i'm not at risk yeah man well you know coming from one uh underground to another, you know, where we come from, I would just say thank you for doing your part and helping the uh, the world get to where we are. Because you know, every bit of a contribution creates the sum of you know is a part of the sum of the whole. And you guys have done a lot, you know. And people can say whatever they want about High Times. The fact of the matter is that High Times has been a humongous driver of. Of the fourth of the cannabis movement for a long time and and just backbone in many ways you know keeping things uh in the conversation so salute for that and of course for moving forward in a direction that that you feel you know fully aligned with especially bringing it home and um and shining a light on the northeast and new england and uh that's really really awesome and now for me you know obviously we love our and and there's there's many reasons why we're involved in this for me my whole life changed when i started seeing it work medically and being involved in this for so long and being involved in different areas of you know the plant let's just say you know have you been more excited have you seen stories and 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 uh you know, you've traveled the world. So aside from seeing amazing growers and beautiful plants, do you hear these other sides of the world, um, you know, coin where people are actually benefiting from the health act actions of the, of the plant? Yeah, I mean, 100%, you know, so I got to say, like, in those early days, uh, you know, my motivation was I loved cannabis, and, you know, primarily also uh, financial, you know, like to for survival. And yes. then at some point, at some point I had an epiphany, you know, after reading Jack Harrow's Emperor Wears No Clothes and uh, 
uh, Shattered Lives by Chris uh, Conrad and Mickey Norris, and and just being involved, answering the phones at high times. People are calling, you know, every day. I need a lawyer. You know, I just got busted in Tennessee, or uh, you know, my grandmother is sick. What can I do to help her? So it, mm -hmm. it 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 motivated me at that point that this isn't just about me or 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 financial benefits or anything. This is like a healing plant, and it's 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 got a message for for us and that's when I kind of dedicated a lot more of my energy to uh, legalization effort, to being part of, uh, you know, normal and things like that. And also encouraging people to grow. That was always the thing was to overgrow, grow, 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 grow. Because the more cannabis in the world, the more medicine for the people. And, you know, in the eighties, we knew of droughts where there was just no cannabis at all. And so over the years, basically uh, I've met thousands of people who have told me that cannabis saved their life. I mean, veterans uh, with post-traumatic stress, uh, cancer patients, people with epilepsy, children, uh, you name it. And I know you know this, of course, as well, but like, it, 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 you can't help but be moved uh, by those stories. And when you hear them over and over, and when you see it with your own eyes, it's so inspirational and so motivational that uh, I couldn't not do something about it. You know what I mean? I had to do something about it. And, and uh, I mean, people are in tears talking to you, uh, telling you about whatever it was, however it was that can was save them. Uh, yeah. And in ways, the large and small, I mean, think about all the small ways that it saves us, just keeping us from flipping out on someone, <laughs> you know, like that's just a tiny little way that it helps, you know, or just in, allowing us to savor a sunset or a, a, a movie or a song. Those are the, the mi minor little ways. But then you see the big ways where people are actually, uh, you know, fighting cancer and uh, treating symptoms. And, and it's, yeah, I mean, at a certain point, it became a mission and very much, uh, you know, the, the mission of my life, really something I dedicated my life to. Aside from, you know, friends and family, it's the most important thing in my life. And uh, it, it is very gratifying to see, uh, you know, some level of freedoms arise, but we got a long way to go. Mm. What would you like to see? I mean, I'd like to see cannabis, as you mentioned, like treated like medicine uh, from, from that aspect where, uh, you know, people's insurance would cover the price of their medicine. Mm. Uh, I'd like to see farmer's markets where I can purchase farm grown, uh, local mom and pop cannabis from vendors in my area that are, are producing it in a sustainable way, uh, you know, biodynamic, organic, all those things, you know, I'd like to, you know, sun grown cannabis. I'd like to, you know, and, and that's not to say there shouldn't be dispensaries or, you know, that's fine too. If people want to go and purchase uh, from a dispensary, that's fine. But I want to see, I want to be able to go to a farmer's market or a co-op uh, and pick up uh, a, a jar of cannabis or some concentrates or edibles or tincture. And I'd like to be able to grow my own. I'd like to be able to go to consumption lounges where I can consume with like-minded people. And uh, I'd like to see all the prisoners released immediately who are in jail for nonviolent cannabis offenses. I'd like to see all the records of anyone uh, expunged. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I could go on and on, but there, there's so, you know, uh, the changes that we're making. Are I'm not stopping you. <laughs> <laughs> the changes that we're making are state by state uh, and, and, and they're positive and things are happening. And, and, and eventually there will be a national change, uh, you know, a federal change. I don't want that federal change to be uh, Schedule 2, where pharmaceutical companies take over cannabis and it becomes uh, another uh, farming product. I mean, I love, I love cannabis flowers. I love cannabis concentrate i don't want to only have like sublingual tablets or sprays or patches you know what i mean i want to be able to smoke a joint if i want to smoke a joint uh i want to see other countries i mean there are countries in this world where you get the death penalty for cannabis that mm. to me is just unfathomable that there's places you know like indonesia uh or many other uh countries where you could be shot or, or electrocuted to death because you use cannabis. I mean, it, to me, Today. it's 
it, it, today. Yeah. And yeah. it's just un, un, unfathomable. I, I think that's such a, a disgrace to us as, as a species, you know, humanity in general. So, you know, <laughs> that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see real true freedom uh, for the plant and, and the ability of people who want to use plant medicines to heal themselves, uh, to, to, for people to be entirely free to do it. And in fact, encouraged to do it and subsidized to do it. You know what I mean? If you're going to help uh, us pay for uh, pharmaceutical drugs and, and, and medical procedures, then there's no reason why insurance shouldn't pay for cannabis. Mm. Danny Danko's dreams, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, we're on our way. We're on our way. I'm, I'm, I don't want to discourage people. We are on our way. We need to keep the you know, politicians feet to the fire. We need to make sure uh, our voices are heard. Uh, you know, the social equity program, like the, the New York program is incredible. I mean, we, uh, at least on paper, we'll see how it talk all about it, out. if you will. Well, on paper, what it looks like is uh, all of those things I just mentioned. I mean, there's um, social equity, not just in, 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 words but in deeds where actual funding uh 40 percent of 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 the money that's taken in actually goes back to benefit communities uh that have been adversely affected by the war on on drugs and i think that's super important and i think the uh, people need to be uh in positions where they can be in the business uh without the the hurdles that you have to jump through you know to you know at this point uh you know, big business is obviously involved and there's these multi-state operators. And so that's important, you know, equity and, and, and ways uh, for the mom and pops to be able to compete with, with these big organizations. Uh, consumption lounges, incredible. I mean, I think we're ahead of almost every state uh, when it comes to that. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, uh, the expungements and the Prisoner releases is happening as well, which is good. Uh, the uh, uh, the the dispensaries uh, we we get to keep the medical side and rec, which I think is great because in some states we've seen uh, rec come in and really uh, destroy the medical program. Uh, so I, I'm glad that there's that as well. That there's those two sides, so that if you're a medical patient, you can grow more plants, you can uh, carry more cannabis. Uh, you don't have to pay as much taxes. Uh, you have different a different a variety of products that may not even be available on the rec side, uh, like uh, Fico and RSO and and things of that nature. Are they capping? Uh, are they putting THC limits on rec and they're going to keep it different for medical? Is that why that's going to nope. be the case when they're not allowing oils for rec? What's the, what's the situation? I, no, no, I don't think there's really much restrictions on, uh, on THC levels or uh, oil or anything. I think, uh, I think really the benefit of, of keeping a medical card is uh, the ability to grow more plants. If you, if you yeah. need, you know, need more medicine, uh, the ability to have more, medicine and i think it's similar to massachusetts where uh you know you don't have to wait in line with rec patients you have a separate line sure. um you know you pay less uh, for the product you pay less in taxes here and, too in colorado yeah right so that's you know that's good you know because in 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 washington for instance you know they had a very favorable uh medical program and the rec program came in and, and really decimated it and i think you know some of the california uh, patients and growers would tell you a similar story about California. So, uh, you know, that's important to maintain uh, medical rights uh, just because we're allowing adult use does not mean that the patients are left behind uh, or that they have to suddenly now enter the rec market, you know? So that's great. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, you know, hopefully it'll be uh, the law that, that they, people use in the future for, for other states. Uh, because, it, you know, so far, at least on paper, it looks really good. Mm. And you know, one of yeah, the there's home, home grow, too, as well, I should mention. You know. How many plants are people allowed to grow? Adults uh, it's allowed to grow? Six, six per person and 12 per household, uh, which isn't a lot of plants. But uh, the reality Same is here. they don't. Right. But they don't tell you uh, the size of the plants, you know. Yes, the you can grow six trees. So you can grow big. <laughs> yeah, you can veg those plants out. Uh you know, and I'm not sure exactly when, a, when they consider a plant to be a plant, but I know that like, uh, you know, uh, in terms of clones, a, a like a vegging plant or a clone or a seedling uh, may not count even as a plant. So uh, I think 
I think they have like something like maybe it's three mature and three uh, young veg uh, veg. Uh, but it's 12 per household as well. So if you're living, if there's more than one person in the household, you can do up that to 12. Uh, and then, yeah, just veg them out a little longer and grow bigger plants. And uh, you never have to buy dispensary cannabis again. You know, I mean, that's my, that's my suggestion to people when they, when they freak out and say, you know, Monsanto and Marlboro and all these companies are now in the cannabis business. And I don't want to buy, you know, Budweiser weed and this and that. I'm, and I'm like, look, you don't have to. <laughs> You really right. don't. All you have to do is put in a little bit of work, um, mm. but you don't even have to. I mean, people can form a cooperative where one person grows, maybe one person makes pickles, another person, you know, does something else and everybody sort of shares in, in what they do. Uh, and it's a cooperative. Uh, and therefore, you know, your skill might not be in cannabis growing, but you join a cooperative and, and maybe you, you know, knit baskets or whatever it is. And now that's your contribution to the co-op and the, the grower's contribution is the plants that they grow. Because honestly, with 12 plants, uh, you know, every three months you're growing, you know, it's more than one person can smoke for the most part. I mean, maybe not me and you, but the average person, <laughs> you know, it's more <laughs> Talk than about it. smoke. So why not share? <laughs> There's no law against sharing it with uh, friends and family or donating it to patients. I think that's an important thing to do just to kick down where, you know, you grow a pound and, you know, you only need a, a, a half a pound. So you donate, you know, a QP to the veterans, a QP to the, um, you know, the medical patients or whatever it is. Uh, all of that is allowed now. So that's really exciting too, I think. Uh, and, and for people that are worried, you know, about corporates, corporations taking over cannabis, like I said, you don't have to worry if you just put in a little bit of work. And you know what? It's also fun. Like, you know, People forget, but like, mm. you know, it's a, a really fun hobby that actually pays off. And there's nothing better than creating your own medicine. I mean, that's, it, it's, Straight it's, up. There, it's, the, it's therapeutic just to do that. And that's before you ever even consume it, which is even more therapeutic. So uh, I think, you know, that is really important to me that grow your, the ability to grow your own. And there's states where it's legal and they can't grow their own. Like Washington, for instance, you cannot grow your own cannabis. It's a, still a felony. But you can they let it. They let it. their uh, cannabis program be run by their liquor department. Uh, so I think that they had some issues with that from the beginning, and ultimately, it just it's like, no, you're not going right. to compete with our liquor stores making all your alcohol at home. You can only have, you know, which is weird because I think we're allowed to make like 500 beers a year or something like that. But ever the more, yeah, man, that's it's 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 kind of kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's the comments that you see every time anyone says like, hey, you know, New York legalized or New Jersey just legalized. And, all, you know, you just see all the naysayers come in and say, oh, you know, now the government takes control and the taxes and super regulate their cut and this over regulation and this and that. And only the rich are going to get richer. And all of those things are true. I mean, that's mm. <laughs> the reality is that those companies are there. They exist. They're they're on the stock market. They're, you know, in multiple states. But you vote with your dollar yeah, we and, and you choose what you want to pay for and what you want to buy and what you want to contribute to. So, you know, you, the, the quality of cannabis that you get from a four by four tent is so much better. I mean, they can't compete because they're growing in warehouses, you know, they're growing in, in you know, hundred thousand square foot facilities. You just can't grow the same quality uh, in a facility, in a warehouse that you can, you know, in a smaller space. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, if there's anything I've learned uh, in visiting all, all of these grows over the years, it's that, you know, the bigger you go, the harder it is to have it be quality. For sure. And you definitely, you know, anybody can get a tent so that they have the right amount of uh, darkness when they need to flower and anybody can find great seeds out there. You know, there's different uh, um, companies that sell seeds and there's anybody can find books from you know, I'm sure that in, in a moment you can name off some books that people can look to. Why don't, why don't you now? Boom. What Talk about it. <laughs> well, this is my book. It came out in 2018. It's called Cannabis, A Beginner's Guide to Growing Marijuana. Uh, it's available, you know, on Amazon and bookstores and all that. But I, I wrote it specifically for the purpose of, of the beginner, uh, mm. a person who really doesn't know where to start, because there's a lot of great grow books out there in the world. Uh, yeah. You know, Jorge and Ed Rosenthal and 
and Greg Green and so many great books, but they, they're like textbooks. You know, you feel like you're going to college. <laughs> so there's a lot that you need to know. To what you going right? to weed so, college? <laughs> <laughs> those are the books that I learned from, uh, but they were a bit intimidating in a way because there's just so, they're so dense and they're so packed with info. You so thought really you had tried all to... this stuff to do. And it's, <laughs> I know. You know, it was scary, but uh, I tried to break it down to just the basics. So it's certainly not comprehensive, but it has a little bit of everything you need to know and enough to get started. Uh, and then, you know, after you've read the beginner grow book, you can delve into some of the more uh, dense textbook style uh, stuff of my colleagues and, and peers. Um, but I wanted something more entry level. So, you know, it's yeah. illustrated, you know, it's like, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty simple to understand, you know, and nice. it's just a little bit of everything. Uh, so that was that was a lot of fun and it's been selling great, you know, even, even now with the pandemic, like I feel like more people are interested in mm. uh, home cultivation. Uh, certainly, certainly gardening in general has, has, uh, has, is having a moment <laughs> as they say. And, uh, and, you know, gardening of cannabis is, is having an even bigger moment, I think. Forced hermit syndrome will do that to a, a person. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you got to find some hobbies. Why not find a hobby that, you know, can can help uh, support you and heal you? Like, I just, mm. I can't think of anything better. Oh, man. And, and like I said, it's fun. You know, it's not that hard either. It's like, you know, if, if you have a fish tank, it's it's kind of like that, you know, it's uh, maybe like a saltwater fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> a little more complicated than a than your average, you know, freshwater fish tank, but somewhere in between the two, it's, but it's fun. And, uh, you know, it's really cathartic. It is. I, I, I love growing indoors. I love even more growing outdoors because I love being barefoot and just watering or just like, you know, doing what I got to do with the plants and being outside under the sun. And, you know, outdoors is so much different, especially if you start with a seed because it develops this taproot. So you, you know, it's going to find its own water and it probably might grow huge as opposed to you put a clone outside. It's not going to have that tap root. It's not going to grow as big. It'll be a little more uh, volatile to, you know, um, sensitive to the environment. And, uh, you know, when you go indoors, you have a little more manual control. So you have to be more responsible, so to speak. And, you know, there's simple ways to do it. You can go get a bag of uh, Sensi Sai or something like that. That's just super soil. You just water it and it finishes. Or you can, you know, learn how to build your own soil or you can use nutrients. Um, you know, buildthesoil.com has a lot of options. And, um, you know, there, there's ways to do it. If, if somebody wants to get involved in and starting to grow their own medicine and they have a little bit of uh, hesitation, you know, let's say that it's legal for them to do it now. What would you say to get them started? Yeah. I mean, I'd say do some research, uh, you know, get everything planned out before you, you start, you know, before you get started. Uh, I, I love tents. I think, uh, you know, you can get a pretty affordable grow tent, uh, which is built for the specific purpose. So rather than taking a closet, and trying to, you know, refurbish it to grow in, or like a cabinet or something. Drilling it's holes. Already got, right, it's already got the holes built in. It's already light tight. Uh, one person can set it up and take it down, which is important too, if, in case you, you know you don't have help. Uh, mm. And you know everything's built for growing, so there's already something to hang the light from. You don't have to worry about you know your light falling down on your plants. Uh, it's typically flood proof. Uh, a lot of times they come with like ex like expensive and complicated hydroponic systems. I would say, don't bother with that. Just get some buckets and some soil mix, as you mentioned, and just hand water your plants. Uh, hydroponics is a little too complicated for beginners. And it's also tends to be more uh, chemical based, you know, the nutrients, the, the reservoir. Uh, in order to grow clean hydroponically, you really are really going to end up with some pretty chemi uh, products. It's, it's pretty difficult to dial in organics hydro. Uh, so I would say, you know, for the beginner soil, a soilless mix is much more forgiving uh, and uh, much cheaper as well. So basically you just need some buckets, a tent, a light, uh, an exhaust fan, charcoal filtration uh, for the exhaust fan. So you're cleaning the air that's coming out, 
oscillating fan inside, moving the air around, uh, you know, watering can and, and some nutrients. Uh, and at that point, once you have all of that ready, then you're ready for genetics. And as you mentioned, growing from seeds has that benefit of, of the tap root uh, and the hybrid vigor if you're getting F1 seeds. Uh, growing from clones has the benefit of them all kind of behaving the same way. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot, a lot of factors there, but for beginners, I would say, um, do the research, uh, don't go crazy with the equipment. Like the most expensive thing is going to be the lighting, um, uh, and the, uh, fans, you know, the electronics and the actual tent. But other than that, you don't need all the, you know, plastic reservoirs and pumps and, and all that, that that's, uh, that's pretty complicated stuff and it's a little bit harder to dial in and far less forgiving, you know? So that would be my recommendations. And just remember the, the two biggest mistakes uh, for beginners are typically overfeeding and overwatering. So, you know, let the, let the plants breathe, let them have a wet and dry cycle and uh, um, more food doesn't mean the plant gets bigger. <laughs> you gotta feed it the right amount uh, and, in a lot of cases, that's less than than the nutrient brands recommend. <laughs> For sure, that's that's really good sound advice. Um, and Danny, I'm drinking a lot of water here. Feel free to take a water break anytime you need. Anybody out yeah. there? Awesome. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, there's different kinds of lights. People get stuck sometimes on what kind of light should I get, and you know. Um, I don't know if you have any any considerations there for what somebody can uh, start with that simple. Of course, I, I think once again, buildthesoil.com has options. You can check it out. Also, make sure you get a nice timer so that you can make you have your, uh, your, your cycle for your plants. You know, it's like outside the sun's coming up and down and the, 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 the trees in the forest knows what to do. And then things as the seasons change, they know what to do. So that's one of the ways that we can manipulate the plant cycles is through the timing of, uh, how of the life cycles. Um, but yeah, what would you, uh, talk about in terms of somebody thinking about lights for inside? Yeah, so uh, it really depends on the size of your tent and, and how much heat you're able to deal with. Uh, I like high intensity discharge HID lights. Uh, um, high, that means high pressure sodium or metal halide, but the new ceramic metal halides uh, are very uh, much more efficient. Um, so I like ceramic metal halides when it comes to HID, uh, but they do give off a lot of heat. So if you, if you don't want the heat issues, uh, there are some amazing LED uh, light emitting diode lights out there that, that have improved greatly um, in the last you know 10 15 years and actually gotten more affordable i mean originally they were very expensive and also kind of you know hit or miss um, tech wise but now yeah. uh, now leds are, are really uh there are some amazing ones out there and very efficient uh don't produce a lot of heat uh don't uh, use a ton of electricity and so um that's really I think the future of any kind of indoor growing is going to be with LEDs. Uh, I'm just old school. I like the HIDs. I like the you know high pressure sodiums. I remember the days of the parabolic reflectors, and uh, you know it's really about heat. If you can pull enough heat off of uh, your light or out of your grow room, um, then you can go with the HIDs. If you don't. You know, if you're in a situation where you can't pull that heat off or, or run AC in the room, uh, I would uh, I would go with LEDs. There's also amazing fluorescent lighting options out there, um, compact fluorescents and and things like that that you can flower with. Uh, but you're not going to get the density uh, that you'll get with LEDs and, and um, especially with HID lights. Um, but uh, you know, another recommendation I would give people also is uh, you know, listen to grow podcasts. I have a podcast that they're free to hear. Um, there's a lot of good ones, not just mine uh, out there. Uh, mine's called grow bud yourself. Um, but there are plenty of others and uh, a lot of great information out there, uh, in, in magazines and podcasts and don't believe everything you read on the internet. There's a lot of conflicting information, but if you find a good source, uh, there's a lot there too. Mm. Check it out. The, um, the lights that you bring up, it, you know, it's, uh, 
I know from personal experience when growing from an HPS, high pressure sodium to growing with the ceramic metal highlight, 315 watts versus the 1000 watt high pressure sodium versus the 1000 watt double ended lights, that the heat is one of the biggest factors. So that's a huge point that you bring up and whether or not somebody's going to have be able to have air conditioning, you know, you obviously don't want to have it too cold. So you want to be able to balance the temperature in your grow room. And so the kind of light you have is going to determine what kind of equipment you might need to balance those temperatures. And the kind of fan you have is going to determine how much heat you're able to pull out of the room and so on and so forth. So the LEDs emit less heat. So do the CMHs, the, the ceramic metal halides, though I remember growing with them, you know, the buds were a little less dense. I, I, and they produced less yield versus the HPSs, which produces nice dense buds and more yield. They would had less of a spectrum. So some some of us like to mix them and have both in the in the room at the same time, and you get more of a broad spectrum. And um, the plants seem to like that also, you know. So it's definitely personal preference and determined upon what uh, what you want to you know results you want to achieve. And so if you're just looking to start simply. And, and, you know, you definitely want a smooth transition into growing your first plants and you don't want to get overwhelmed. You know, you definitely can get yourself an LED or one ceramic metal halide that's not going to give off a lot of heat and you can grow and, and you'll learn. That's the most important thing. And, they, you know, these things always uh, generally have a resale value, especially if in your state that's starting. You're definitely going to be able to, you know, sell it used to somebody else. A state like Colorado has been around for a while. It's a little harder to sell your used grow equipment because everybody has it, you know. So some okay. people are here like selling their equipment in Oklahoma that just started and they're finally being able to recoup some money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I just launched a, a website, actually, Danny's Grow Tents dot com where you can actually get grow tents and led lights and everything nice. uh, right, yeah right there if people want to check it out i mean uh there's a decent amount of, of different sized options there um but you mentioned something very important about heat uh because environmental control is another thing that people kind of ignore in a lot of ways they're just kind of like set up their tent set up their light and start growing and they're not really uh, measuring the temperature in the room especially right at the canopy level uh, and also the humidity. It's so important. I mean, think of, of, of where plants are happiest. Uh, they're in either in a greenhouse or someplace like Hawaii where the humidity is very, you know, is, is above 50%, let's say 50 to 60% uh, typically. Uh, and and your, your house is not going to be that humid for the most part, depending. I mean, most of our houses are much drier than that uh, with the heat on and especially with the grow light uh, in a tent it's gonna dry that air out very quick. So uh, you might need a humidifier. Uh, you might need a dehumidifier, <laughs> you know, who knows? It depends on if you're in, in Colorado, you might need a humidifier. In Northern California, <laughs> you might need a dehumidifier. So that's why that's where environment becomes very important to controlling the environment. And it's something a lot of people ignore when they start growing, uh, but at their peril, because if it's too dry or too hot, uh, the plants will die or they'll just stop growing. So um, it's very important to control environment. Mm. And yeah, that's why one of the reasons why people use CO2 uh, in their room is because and you can get a bag or you can get a tank and flow it in from from the ceiling because it likes to fall. And so that helps the plant withstand a little more heat, basically. And, um, you know, they say that it also, um, you know, um, potentiates max helps maximize yield. And uh, it's good for the plants and plants are able to soak that in. And all these things might be overwhelming to you, but at the same time, there's <clears throat> there's dials that we can grab a hold of if we want to really dial in our room to the point where we're so happy we want to share our medicine or where we're just like, you know, we're, we're taking pictures of it. And we're probably going to take pictures of the first things that we grow anyway, and we should, because anything that you produce, it's a miracle you know and thank yeah. god we're allowed to be doing this and uh we're so blessed that a we could talk about it because that you know i know i have friends in different parts of the world that are that are huge activists though when they're home in their country they have to be very careful about what they talk about and how they talk about it because they will be taken right. away and god willing they won't and and they're protected but you know i i feel like you have something to say on this yeah well as you mentioned like taking pictures and all that take notes too you know take notes uh you know everything the date you know the the temperature the humidity everything and that way that in that way you'll be able to go back and look and see 
what might have went wrong, what went right that you want to duplicate in the next time, what you might want to change. Uh, but don't think that you're going to remember all the details and all that. We used to have to do that because we didn't want to take notes uh, when things were, were much riskier. But now we have the ability um, to have a calendar set up, you know, know exactly the date that you planted your plants, know the date that you put them into flower, all the information, just keep track of it. Uh, that's very important. Bro, Biggie said it best, you know? Relax and take notes while I take notes that I never want to smoke. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm here in in, in Brooklyn where the St. Murals is a biggie. <laughs> hey, I'm actually releasing a, a 10 Crack Commandments remix called wow. the 10 Crypto Commandments. And All that's right. coming real soon to a theater near you. It's going to be a, a music video. One, two, three, Pretty excited four, about it, actually. Six, seven, eight, nice, perfect. The crypto <laughs> so, um... Yeah, tell us, like, obviously you're into uh, Northeast Leaf Mag right now and you're you're uh, getting that off the ground and you said you're a year in. Congratulations. So what's the focus with the mag and what are you looking to do in uh, New England and beyond? Yeah, um, the focus is the cannabis community and industry, for sure, of the Northeast. We mm -hmm. are, uh, uh, I mentioned the eight states earlier. Uh, yeah. It's a free magazine, so we distribute through uh, dispensaries, through head shops, um, even you know a few other spots, breweries and, and uh, um, coffee spots and things like that. Uh, and and basically, you know, we have like blood tender of the month, strain of the month, uh, concentrate of the month, topicals. Uh, we do company profiles. Uh, we have like nice. one cannabis one hundred one kind of situations for people because I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of people um, that are uh, just dipping their toe, you know, now that it's legal, uh, and, and, you know, they're dabbling, you know, there might be, uh, seniors who, who might've smoked in the sixties and seventies, but kind of gave up, started families. And now they're returning to it because as it's, as an alternative to, uh, alcohol, uh, to tobacco, to even caffeine and sugar cannabis, mm. you know, it will add years to your life. Right. We know mm. that. Uh, whereas those other things are poisons um, that take away from you, you know, your, your, your life. So uh, I think, you know, the people that want to make that, dis that intelligent decision um, to replace those harmful poisons in their life with healing plant medicines like cannabis, um, I think they're interested, but they don't necessarily know, they don't, you know, walking into a dispensary for the, for the first time could be very intimidating. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, some of those people, we want to educate them to know, okay, you know, you don't just walk in and buy whatever the highest THC level flowers are, you know, those, that might not be the best flowers. Um, there might be, you know, something on the uh, menu that is, 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 doesn't have, you know, the highest level of THC, but is much more in tune with what you need for your particular uh, needs. So, um, you know, we want to educate them on, uh, what concentrates are, you know, what, you know, how they're made, uh, what the difference is between something like a BHO and a solventless rosin, mm. you know, that's very important because I think, you know, people just see a product in a package and they don't know how it was produced or, or what it, you know, what it entails. And I, uh, you know, for, especially for medical patients, I think very important to know what went into uh, the products. So we, we, you know, we're, we're just trying to educate people and let them know not only about uh, what's available product wise, but also what's going on politically. Uh, so we have news. Uh, we have a pretty prominent news section. We try to cover every state every month, uh, if we can, if there's something that's happened. Uh, and obviously, lately, things have been happening very quickly in the Northeast. So um, we've been covering the news. We have our website, leafmagazines.com, uh, where that's that encompasses all the different, uh, you know, leaf magazines that I mentioned earlier from all the different regions and states. Uh, and then we also have, uh, um, uh, you know, our, all our social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter and, and Facebook and all that. Um, so, yeah, very excited about uh, the leaf. You can subscribe to the magazine now as of like yesterday uh, at subscribe.neleafmag.com. Uh, so because uh, you can only pick up the magazine in dispensaries and head shops uh, in the past, we had a lot of demand from people because they were running out at the stores 
Uh, you know, they get them at the beginning of the month, they get 50 or 100 copies. And by, you know, the middle of the month, they're all gone. Um, so people have been writing us asking about subscriptions and we finally uh, got it all set up. Um, so for just $6 an issue, uh, they can get them delivered right to their house. Uh, so that's subscribe.neleafmag.com if people want to join up there. Um, and yeah, we, we just want to be the voice of the region or a voice. I mean, there's lots of voices. So I don't want to say the voice because, you know, there's lots of voices and we, we, we want to amplify all those voices. So uh, we, we have patient of the month. So we, we talk about um, med the medical aspect and that is very helpful for us because we're the first of our, our state, you know, our leaf magazines that has multiple states. Um, so, you know, we are dealing with multiple different laws. So it's medical here or it's rec there, or in particularly like, oh, let's say New Hampshire, there was really no, you know, no protection for cannabis uh, people as of yet. So uh, yeah, we're just, uh, it, you know, if, for me, it's a homecoming. Like I said, I grew up uh, in Boston. I live in New York City for 25 years now. Uh, for me, this Northeast region. Yeah, so it's New England and the tri-state area. Um, uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, this region is my home. And, you know, as the industry developed in Colorado and California, uh, you know, and I'm, we're watching that from the East Coast, thinking, when is it going to get here? Uh, now it's finally on its way. And uh, I think we have the opportunity to learn from some of the mistakes that have been made, uh, you know, regula regulation wise in some of the other states, and hopefully. Uh, fix those so that those states can go back and change their laws too. I mean, like we mentioned earlier that some of the states had flaws or over-regulation uh, in their laws, but those can all be changed too. You know, the, nothing's written in stone. So there's, you just got to keep pushing. And, and, you know, if you're, if the people in office don't uh, listen and don't want to do uh, what, what we say, then we run for office and, and, you know, take their positions and, you know, it's, it's simple as that, you know, and, and Colorado is a perfect example of that, you know, with Jared Polis and, you know, the cannabis industry basically, you know, showing the world, how, you know, what can be, what, what this plant is capable of. So many times throughout this conversation, I wanted to say, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Because you're just wow. crushing, it, you know, you're, you're hitting really key points. And some a couple of points that you touched upon, I want to just, uh, I want to uh, circle back to, if I may. You're talking about taking notes. And uh, I sidetracked us with the Biggie comment and my crypto commandments that are coming up, though. Ultimately, something that that's so important that I've noticed, too, throughout my uh, experience and years of, of, of working with people to remediate life-threatening ailments is taking notes and journaling our experience, documenting our experience from what we eat, from how much we're eating to how what, what we're taking for, as a treatment um, and how much we're taking, how often we're doing it, how we're feeling. That's so important to go back. And the same thing with you growing. It's so important when you go back, you have a cheat, we have a cheat sheet now to our success and or learning from our failures so that we can really optimize our experience and have our hands on these dials that we're talking about so that we can start applying this knowledge as wisdom and become and, and start to benefit from what we're learning. And so, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, sometimes it's a pain in the ass to be taking notes all the time, though at the same time, when we're willing to invest in ourselves, we're the ones who win. So I just wanted to touch on that. And if there's anything you want to say in response, please. I mean, I agree 100%. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's if you don't do it, you're kind of just uh, flying blind every time. You know, you're just kind mm. of hoping you remember. You're just hoping you remember. And, and yeah, <laughs> that, that doesn't work out always for me. For sure. And, and it could be as simple as, you know, it, you know, just writing down when, you took the plant cutting or when you put the seed in, writing down when you put it into, you know, um, flour. That's so important at the very least. Put it, mm -hmm. a, a sticker or a piece of tape and write it on it on the pot and you will thank yourself later for reminding you when it went in, all right? Um, number two, you spoke about um, cannabis for health and um, <clears throat> Um, you, you said sometimes it can replace caffeine, it can replace sugar. And I just want to say my personal experience of taking substances or, or uh, cannabinoids like CBD, which 
I, I know that it kind of helps me after I, if I have some sugar, it kind of turns on our sugar burning a little more. And just like THC is turning on our fat burning a little more and it can help our body regulate these things. So our metabolism is a big part of our, of our health and, and connected to our immune system. And it's, and it's being communicated with our neurological system and our cannabinoids interact with these major systems because our endocannabinoid system regulates these major systems. So I just want to bring that up and talk about the fact that any one of us can look up endocannabinoid system and check out why cannabis has the ability to work for us. And if you wonder why uh, we talk about the U.S. government knowing about it, you can look up patent 6630507 and understand that the government has known about the medical value or at least documented the medical value for quite some time. And who knows how long that we've known about it because it's been a medicine for thousands of years. So I just want to salute everybody who's, you know, um, willing to talk about the truth. And we're here with Danny Danko. So talking about the truth is a big thing, big part of your life. And, you know, you've been uh, doing this in the face of adversity for so long. So thank you. You've been a voice of the people for a long time and you're a good person. I met you in person and I, and I, I know your energy and, and I could say that I'm, I'm happy to have you as a luminary on this show to open up a window into who you are, what you do and why you do it, because everybody has the ability to do what we love in a way that could help us because you're doing what you love and it helps you. And then you're sharing what you love with other people and it helps us. And what's better than that? You know, you make a magic by doing what you love. Man, I so. appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, it's like, it's just about the plant. The plant has given me so much that I just want to give back and spread the word. As you mentioned, the endocannabinoid system, this is within our bodies. Most, many doctors do not know about this. It's just crazy. Mm, talk uh, about but it. But well, we talk about treating ourselves with using cannabis, but if you look at it from the perspective of the, we have an endocannabinoid system with receptors that recept, you know, that receive cannabinoids. That means that people who aren't using cannabis are deficient in cannabinoids. Mm. That's not the same as, oh, you and me, you and I treat our, you know, treat ourselves with cannabis for, for symptoms that we have. No, the people who aren't using cannabis are deficient in those cannabinoids. They are actually deficient that, you know, and that's an interesting way to look at it. And I think, you know, uh, years from now, when science looks back and, and, you know, they're going to look at cannabis, like Dr. Greenspoon said, as a miracle, a miracle, like penicillin. Uh, and they're going to wonder how how crazy we were and how stupid we were, you know, for seventy almost eighty years to have holding ourselves hostage, throwing throwing people in jail, destroying their lives, separating them from their families, killing their pets, invading their homes, all of the injustices, large and small, mm -hmm. that have occurred, all to 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 suppress a healing flower that mm. that that you need in your body, you need it. It's it, it, the receptors want a receptor there for a reason. You know, babies have them. Breast milk has cannabinoids in it. I mean, look it up. Don't, I, it's not a conspiracy yes. theory. I am not a coop. This is the reality. Google it and look it up. This isn't, don't, you know, <laughs> don't believe me, check for yourself. You know, uh, the, the patent exists. The, the cannabinoid system exists. And if you're not, Feed, you know, fueling your body and feeding your body with cannabinoids, you're deficient in them. <laughs> I would love to say that, you know, and endocannabinoid, endogenous cannabinoid, endogenous, something our body produces. So with that, you know, I've come to understand and, you know, I'm always willing to, to learn something new and, and uh, begin to understand things in a new way. So at this particular time in, the, in, the, in my life, the way that I understand it is that many of us have the ability to or, or are adequately creating these endogenous cannabinoids to, um, for our endocannabinoid system to work adequately now uh, or efficiently. Now, with that being said, many of us are endocannabinoid deficient. Our bodies are not adequately creating uh, these endogenous cannabinoids. So supplementing with this God given or creator given nature given plant cannabinoids is what we're designed to receive. These receptors are there to receive. And so we can supplement with cannabinoids to balance out our endocannabinoid system. And that's, um, you know, something that 
because not everybody uses cannabis and 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 feels good. Not everybody wants to use cannabis. And not to say that if you want to use it or you don't want to use it, that doesn't mean that you need it. Though, you know, and who am I to say what you need? That when we're talking about medically and scientifically, when we're talking about having some sort of ailment and being able to find the solution in something, you know, there could be multiple solutions. They might have multiple um, impacts. You know, they might have different, uh, um, you know, results from take from doing them you know there's there's let's just talk about hypothetically chemo versus cannabis both have the potential of not working though one may give you harmful side effects for the future and the other one is not going to we haven't determined without pre-existing conditions that cannabis is going to kill you or give you harmful side effects for the future you know and obviously like i said pre pre-existing conditions everybody is different and you know, so with that in mind, de depending on your medical condition, you could have a number of, of reasons to look into that way further. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not treating you. So I just want to say, you know, always, you know, research for yourself and ask doctors for advice and, and look further because you're so worth self-care and, and, and individual care really is what it comes down to. And that's why, you know, for me, utilizing, understanding that utilizing different strains throughout the day for me is really important because if I'm using the same strain in the morning that I'm using at night, I might not be able to get sleep if I'm using the same strain in the morning, uh, at night that I'm using in the morning, I might not be able to get to work. And so, and throughout the day. And so, you know, we don't always have to, like, at, we talk about beginners, obviously you don't want to overwhelm yourself. You want to start someplace and you want to figure out, okay, I like to smoke that uh, between five and seven in the evening. Anytime around that, I'm not too sure. And you only know that, but really gaining experience because experience creates an expert. So trial and error is key and become familiar with your plants. Eventually, like us, I'm sure you'll be able to know your plants without even putting the strain name on it. But definitely when you get seeds, name your strains, name the one. If you have 10 seeds, say seed one, seed two, seed three, and figure out which one is your favorite. Clone them all before you put them into flowers so that you can save it and uh, find your favorite one and say, ah, I'm glad that I did that. And um, Danny, is there anything that you want to share at all? Like when you're, when you're walking around in, in the world and you're like, man, I really wish that people knew this, you know? Is, is there anything that you want to share on that? Wow. Um, I mean, I think the most important thing, the thing that excites me is that we've only scratched the surface of what this plant is capable of. And uh, that's exciting to me. And uh, even just in the last 10 years, the amount of developments, uh, both scientific and, you know, in our industry uh, have, are mind blowing. You know, and if you're talking 30 years, it's even more mind blowing. I mean, look at edibles and tinctures and topicals and all of these things that did not exist at all in any way, shape or form. And so, um, as you mentioned, you know, cannabis isn't for everybody because not everybody wants the psychoactive effects, but there are lots of ways to uh, feed your body cannabinoids without the psychoactive mm. effects. And that's important to know as well, because mm. uh, you don't have to get high to use cannabis talk um, about now, i like to get high <laughs> you know i enjoy it but you know there's definitely people out there that that, sh that shouldn't or or don't enjoy it so mm -hmm. um but that doesn't mean that they need to deprive their bodies because there are uh ways of consuming cannabinoids uh without those effects and you know you know better than most <laughs> of course about that but there's um, cbd cbg cbn you know and and so many uh, thca and thcv and yeah you I could mean, even grow the plant and just take the leaves without putting it into flour and juice them put them through your juicer and you will indeed. get such amazing well let me say i've gotten such amazing benefit and i firsthand seen it like somebody just doing that differently and and it really, really helping serious ailments. And so, yes. you know, it's worth looking into Dr. William Courtney is somebody that's put out a lot of research on raw cannabinoids and cannabis leaf juicing in particular. So I just want to mention that as well. Thank you for bringing that up. And please continue. I'm loving what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, uh, the, the, the science that's going on now, uh, the ability of uh, the studies to occur, even though it's still not not very easy to get the the funding or the cannabis or the you know all all of it you know it's very difficult still 
um, but in other countries, maybe easier, Israel and Spain have done some amazing studies uh, on P PTSD or just post-traumatic stress or, you know, a lot of epilepsy. Um, so again, we're just scratching the surface and that's so exciting to know that there's so much more to learn. Um, so I would just say that, that it's not just about uh, getting high, although there's nothing wrong with getting high. And so for anyone out there uh, who's a, a responsible cannabis user, uh, don't let anyone ever uh, make you feel any shame about it. Be proud, uh, be excited. We're on the right side of history. And that's the important thing to remember is that the, you know, uh, we're, we're on the right side of history. We are on the side of a healing flower and anyone who's on the other side at this point is pretty much getting paid <laughs> one way or the other because there's really no, no true opposition except the paid opposition. And that's pharmaceutical, alcohol, tobacco, prison guard unions, police unions, uh, you know, the politicians, they're all way behind on the subject. But the majority of us, we know what's going on. Don't let anyone ever um, bring you down. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, cannabis use in any way, shape or form. So uh, enjoy, keep it green. Uh, you know, if you're a grower, look to the sun, you know, look to the greenhouse. Uh, eventually, um, the plant, you know, the plant wants to grow in full sunshine. And that's where you're going to get the most, the highest quality essential oils uh, produced and cannabinoids. So uh, yeah, <laughs> a little, little long winded, but that's, uh, that's my, my last words for, for the people. Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes you need, well, we often need the wind for the chimes to sound. So I'm glad that you know, you uh, you got that wind in your pipes and you, you're speaking my language. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here just hearing what you're talking about and just really honored to be a part of bringing forth this message to our world because this plan has been so important for me in my life as well and 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 allowed allows me to continue this journey in a way that that I feel connected with. And, you know, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. And we see this as we move throughout the world and it brings so many of us together in, in, in peace and harmony. And uh, the fact that it has health beneficial implications and there's research on PubMed and the National Institute of Health and so on and so forth. Like I said, patent 6630507 exists, you know, check it out, become familiar with being a sovereign individual means being having you know recognizing our ability to respond to our abilities and that's being responsible and we all have that ability in some way shape or form and if not then we are going to help the next person because we've already helped ourselves and we see they need help and so when we all work together it's a little less impactful on everyone and it's so much easier to keep each other up and so cannabis this allows us to, to to create that insight. That's why we, we come together more on it. And, you know, without being preaching, I'm just going to say that I'm grateful for this plant. I'm grateful for you. And uh, uh, you know what? Now I have one. I have one more thing. To please, say then, please. If that's right. Uh, I want to tell people out there, if you uh, or if you have friends or family or anyone in your life who is struggling with opiate addiction, alcohol abuse, uh, pharmaceuticals, anything that's hurting them, please, I urge you, even if it's post-traumatic stress, whatever it is, I urge you to consider cannabis or, or urge your friend or family member to consider cannabis because you can save their life and you can improve their life. And that's the most important part of what we're trying to say is that you can add years to your life and make those years enjoyable by using cannabis instead of those poisons. So please, please, please consider it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. And I just want to add, if I may, that it, it, it could help a lot of us know that we don't own anybody else. Just to keep this in mind, obviously, we probably already know this, but we don't own anybody else. Nobody's going to tell us what's doing, how to do it. And and so with that in mind, when we want to help somebody else, perhaps it could be somebody who we love dearly, just somebody we're very close to, that you know, we all, as being sovereign beings, have the ability, thank God, to make our own choices so you know just keep that in mind because not everybody's going to do what we want them to do 
not everybody's going to adhere to the research that we now believe once we have been, you know, once we feel educated. And what it comes down to is harmonizing between the two. So how do we have an effective conversation? What's the, what's the, correct form of communication what's the right frequency so that we can harmonize because somebody has to be interested in what we're talking about somebody has to care about what we're talking about in order to register it and digest it and then somebody has to believe in it in order for to want to do it so all these things have to take place in order for us to actually have an impact on potentially you know helping so I just, you know, throughout the years of, of being involved in these kinds of situations and becoming, I'm very passionate about what I do and I'm, and I'm, and I'm here to tell the truth, you know, the whole truth. And, 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 you know, at the same time, I have to remember that, you know, the truth does not, is, you know, the truth is paramount though. Harmony is more important. And especially if somebody is like going through it, you know, we don't want to have a stressful conversation. We want to have a very easy conversation. We want to remember the situation they're in and we want to really figure out how, you know, we can be an inspiration because when we turn on our light, more, more often than not, we turned on our light because we saw somebody else turn on their light and we want to turn on our light. We're like, wow, this, this is amazing. Now I just want to share this. And so let's just be mindful of everybody else's situation. And I just, I just want to say that too. And Danny, I'm not, you know, like if anything at all, like I, I, it comes to mind, feel free. And I also would just want to add uh, this one question in, in, you know, general conclusion. Um, what is your contribution to our world? Huh. Wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I, just, I hope that uh, my contribution is that I've spread the word about uh, the healing flower of cannabis um, and plant medicines, because plant medicines also include uh, psychedelic ethnogens and psilocybin and things of that nature. And sometimes it takes one of those uh, for, for those people that are struggling uh, to, to come around. You know, uh, so help me. I, 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 I hope that I've been a messenger for the plant. That's really mm. it. You know, I mean, I hope that my friends mm. and family uh, know that I love them and that, you know, I, I cherish them and, and that um, mm. really those are the important things to me. It, it, it's and, and, and I just hope that, you know, uh, that things continue progressing forward even long after I'm gone so that like my kids and and their kids will live in a in a in a more just and a in a in a more healed world uh, that's just more compassionate and empathetic towards people and, and and animals and the and the planet you know I think we're all connected I'm not a very religious person but I I I, I can't, you know I, my if 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 there was a religion for me it, it's the it's nature it's the earth it's the trees it's the uh, you know, the um, mycelial system that is underneath our feet, you know, that <laughs> yes. it's, it's, it's the, it's the breathing planet. It's the, it's the way it's able to regenerate. It's a compost pile. You know, I, that's, I worship a compost pile, <laughs> you know what I mean? I the it. ability, <laughs> the ability of our planet to, 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 to do what it does. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, and so, uh, we're all connected in that way, and I think that we need to feel that more. And I think that that's something that plant medicine helps us with, just to slow down. I think people buy people buy books, self help books, and they get go to psychiatrists and they do all these things to try to be in the moment and not be thinking about the future or the past or whatever it might be. And these are plants that do that for us. They put you in the moment, you know, uh, and uh, they're here for us to use. They're, 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 there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason that one you know one mushroom tastes amazing and another one makes you feel like you're connected to the planet <laughs> you know there's a reason that this plant makes people feel good and heals their bodies you know and and, and their minds so uh just we gotta keep searching for the for the reason and and keep your mind open keep your eyes open and remember no one's an expert you know, we're this, we're just scratching the surface. So there's so much more mm. left, left to learn, but uh, tread lightly, uh, treat the mm. planet properly, treat, you know, treat the earth with respect and, mm. uh, and, you know, hopefully yes. we'll get there. So we'll, we'll evolve. 
uh, at some point and and become better. But uh, you know, that's what I hope my legacy is: is just to to to. I hope I, I pointed the way in the right direction, along with many others uh, that are, are past and gone now that showed me the, the direction. So I'm just trying to show everyone else that this is the way, <laughs> like they say on the Mandalorian. <laughs> you know, plant medicines are the way, plant healing is the way. And uh, it's as simple as that. Mm. Thank you for what you do, by the way, because you know, I talk about it and you live it, you know, you're out there living it every day. So thank you. You know, you're healing patients one by one face to face and that's priceless and, and very special. You know, it's an amazing plant and thank God we have access to it. And, um, you know, you brought up a lot of good points about this, the fact that there's people in prison today, that there's people who will get killed today for having a trace amount of it. There's, you know, we're very, we're very blessed. And, um, you know, I've seen people die who haven't had enough. I've seen people die who had a little bit and died happier. I've seen parents lose their children and I've seen children lose their parents. And I've seen children gain their parents and parents gain their children. And um, animals too, you know? And um, what's more important, you know? No, it's, I, an amazing, I saw, it's an amazing thing, <laughs> you know? We just got to saw this sign. <clears throat> exactly. I saw this sign. It was the girl holding up a sign and said, I don't know how to convince adults to care more. You know? That's a and good one. That's, you know, I'm crying right now. Like, that's what it's all about. I, I, I've been in a children's hospital where parents who came from another country, um, um, well, state Puerto Rico came here to save their daughter and this hospital, you know, they, they were offering death and they said, let's give her enough morphine. She's in a coma. She'll go peacefully. And we hadn't used the oil yet. And, and, um, and I said, you know, I'm here in this conversation because they want you know, they, they, they have interest in using cannabis oil. So why would you offer death when we have other options? It just seems, you know, I, I would love to know a little bit more about that. And the, the response was, and I won't, you know, for liability purposes, put any names out there. Though I'll just say they said, and this is a very prominent hospital, you know, um, a children's hospital in the United States. And um, they said that we don't know where the oil's from. We don't know, you know, so on and so forth. It wasn't qualified to the extent that they were content with giving it. And so their option was death. And so the mother was like, you know, she has breath, you know, she's breathing. And so the fact is that this little girl, four years old, ate more cannabis oil than any adult that I ever worked with. The oil, I'm going to say, and in, in, from my observation, because she was on her deathbed, we can call it, the, the oil brought her out of a coma and, and home for eight months. And she, she got better and better. And they, they, they kept saying that um, nothing else helped her. Everything was hurting her. And they were giving, they were pumping her full of stuff and the parents loved her so much. And they were listening to these doctors and suits and million dollar buildings. And mind you, my father's a doctor. I love doctors. We're here because, you know, I'm, I'm here because a doctor delivered me. Many of us are here because somebody else delivered you though. I'm just going to say that, 
you know, I have respect for the profession. I know doctors learn how to qualify information and then they become liable for what they tell people. And so it's very important that you feel comfortable about what you're telling people, especially when you're licensed and, you, and your life is on the line and somebody else's. So how I qualify information and how somebody out there in the world qualifies information, how a doctor qualifies information, very different, you know? And so with that being said, there's doctors who everybody's different. Right. And hospitals, we know, are for general hospitals or for profit institutions that um, are looking to, you know, fill beds and get people out of beds and fill beds and turnover. And and it doesn't you know, I, I'm I, I I see that people want to help people. You know, I mean, that's the nature of us. And, and, and I honor everybody for all the work that we're putting in, all the education that we're getting in order to go to work every day and do our job. It's not easy you know and at the same time like being a part of that conversation i now see i now know what goes on when i'm not there other times too because i wasn't a one-off you know and more often than not people don't make it out of that because i'm not there the mother's not there to say no you know and if i wasn't there who knows because i have to tell you the truth rest in peace she passed away a little over eight months later when a different very very famous organization gave her chemo that killed her and you know it's um it's real you know and and you know when i came out here initially in 2011 in colorado i wasn't really sure you know i always thought you know people were getting their cards so that we could smoke you know and then i learned about cannabis oil and i learned about our endocannabinoid system and why cannabis has the ability to work and then i saw it, it help somebody with leukemia stop getting blood transfusions what and get off of narcotics what you know, pain and cleaning the blood and helping with leukemia and so on and so forth. And children to adults, to elderly, to uh, animals. You're right. I, like I, saying it's a miracle. I mean, I, I, it's uh, all I all I can say is that I've seen it constantly, like time and time again, and everything has the potential of not working. So it's just it's nice that we have the ability to have safe access or grow our own. And so utilizing, you know, reading Danny Danko's book on how to how to grow your first plants. Uh, Danny, what's the name of the book again? It is Cannabis, A Beginner's Guide to Growing Marijuana. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, it's, it, it's such a special and important plant. And that's why it, it, it upsets me sometimes in the past where you see like, uh, uh, in the, in the articles on or, or TV stations where they, they're just, it's always a joke, you know, it's always like, the stoners mm -hmm. want some edibles or some, you know, some Doritos and 420, ha, ha, ha. And it's always like this, this, like, put down of, like, the stoners, this, and this, you know, it's just always this, like, wink, wink, like, oh, they just- When they can show have. parents begging they for their just, children's lives. Right. Where I'm saying, okay, yeah, that's fine. You can, you know, you can poke a little fun at us, but you have to also understand the serious side of this thing. Uh, and how how important this is because okay haha ha, you know there's the stereotype the stoner you know sitting on his couch watching tv blah 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 but there's also as you said the the, the child who needs this to survive or the veteran who is thinking about killing himself or drinking themselves to death or whatever it might be and this is their lifeline it's a lifeline yes, yes. So, talk about it that, you know, that's just important for people to, to know. And, and I, you know, it, it, it bums me out sometimes when, when it's just looked at at face value and just joked about, and it's always just a punchline. Um, you know, not, that's not to say we don't have fun. We have fun, you know, obviously our parties are a lot more fun than the prohibitionist parties, you know, and, and we, we enjoy ourselves because cannabis helps you to enjoy things and savor things and, and enhances things. Some so, of us, some of us. For some of us, exactly. So for me, it's an enhancement. It's, I, it, you know, if I'm going to go for a walk in the park, it's, I enjoy that walk a little more while high. And, you know, is that medical? To me, it is, you know, to some, it might not be, but uh, if it makes you feel better, it's good, you know, it's better, you know, it's harmless, you know, it's not, yeah, I don't know, you know, basically, uh, you know, I would just say honor the plant, you know, um, if you're a businessman and you want to make some money in cannabis, there's money to be made. There's nothing wrong with making money, uh, but honor the plant. This isn't a cell phone. It's not a widget. 
it's a healing flower. So please treat it accordingly. Mm. How does one honor the plant? You know, if you could just very briefly, if you could touch on that, because I have another question for you before we uh, right. go about a day. Well, you know, uh, <clears throat> the difference, like, let's say, what's the difference between a CBD product that you can buy at a gas station and something like these, you know, CBD nightcaps? <laughs> Gorilla Hill and Nightcaps. Well, there's a huge difference, right? Because one uses, uh, you know, solventless, uh, organic, sun-grown, you know, like it, it just, the quality of what you get out is what you put in. So mm. uh, if you're going to get, you know, cheap Chinese hemp paste from, you know, some toxic heavy metal farm overseas mm. and put that into a, a capsule and feed it to someone, that's not honoring the plant, in my opinion, you know, honor the mm. plant, find it in its, in its finest form, in its cleanest form, in its, you know, most sustainable, uh, earth-friendly form, uh, and, you know, sp spread it to people who need it, you know, there's, like I said, there's nothing wrong with making money, I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to that, uh, you know, people need to feed their families and pay their rent, but the plant, you know, honor the plant. You know, I, I feel like uh, it, it's it, it should be intuitive. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you if, if if there's a business person out there that doesn't know, then they should shouldn't be in that business. They should do a little more research uh, before mm. getting in the business. You know, because this isn't like a jump in and out, get rich quick scheme. You know, we, we dedicate our lives to this, uh, and uh, it's it's a living it's a life and death situation for many people. So it, it, it's, a, it's a different kind of product. You're not just dealing with uh, paper clips here. You know, this is, it's medicine and it's, it, it's bigger than, than, you know, just a, you know, a, a spreadsheet or something, you know, mm. this, is, this is life and death and it's very important and it's very special. And, uh, you know, share the love and honor the plant and, and it'll give back to you way more than, than you think. Like, that's why I named my first podcast free weed, because the more, the more I gave away, the more I got back, mm -hmm. you know, I would give away a pound and I'd get five pounds back somehow, you know, it's like this weird, you know, it's like the giving tree or the, you know, this, it, it, it just, you know, it's I agree. Hard, it's hard to explain for me, like how how the the passion that I have for it. But it's 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 the the more you give the plant, the more it gives back. And it, it's like it's it's a it's a friend, <laughs> you know. It's like a a shoulder to cry on, or a friend to to to, to watch a movie with, or enjoy a walk with. It, it's it's really um, healing in so many ways that uh, you know. That's why I would just implore people that want to be in the business to just honor the honor the plant. Well, thank you for that. You know, it's uh, it's important we know how to do things. You know, I, that's the thing. Like when I said I came out here and I, I thought people just were using the uh, these channels to get high, and then I started understanding a little bit more about it as well. There's other you know, not to say that people aren't uh, just, you know, and not to say that that's not medical, you should be able to determine what you need for your, you know, medical journey. And, um, and, you know, that's medical sovereignty. And with that being said, understanding, especially if somebody's getting into this business, or if somebody wants to be able to retain the rights or attain, obtain the rights, you know, um, achieve safe access you know, um, possibilities to look at the semantics of how the politics are being um, played out. So if we're talking about the fact that cannabis is a schedule one drug, we're talking about legalizing it, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a myriad of options in there because somebody can, well, the, it can get rescheduled, which can go to a different schedule class, class schedule of drugs, and then we want to talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it should be descheduled. Yeah, there's yeah. no schedule that cannabis belongs on. Not everybody uh, understands what that alcohol is. Alcohol is not on a schedule. Yeah. Nicotine is not on a schedule. And those are far more harmful. So I put cannabis in the class of herbal supplements. 
okay? Just something you could buy at CVS uh, or a drugstore. So no, the, no schedule, no schedule. Schedule two, schedule three, those are, are just ways for, uh, um, you know, ways to pharmaceuticalize cannabis. So basically there will be no smokable cannabis. Out of our hands, you don't make Tylenol yeah. at home. There's no, yeah, there's no smokable cannabis on schedule two or three. Uh, those are, you know, capsules, tablets, patches, maybe tincture, but nothing, no, no rigs or, or, or rolling papers are involved in that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, 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 of changing. I mean, obviously it's a step in the right direction because schedule one is ridiculous. Schedule one is no medicinal value at all. So granted it is a tiny step in the right direction, but I don't think it's the step that we want. I think we want to take a big step, which is descheduling. And I think there is some impetus for that. I think there are some politicians on board with that that understand the cannabis just does not belong on the drug schedule at all. You know, it's like, you know, tea, <laughs> you know, tea affects you. It has a psychoactive effect. I mean, it makes coffee's the same. I mean, caffeine is a strong not a drug. I mean, it, it's what a about stimulant. salt? It's you know, have stimulant. you ever brought brought up salt? being <laughs> the most like the most salt, one of the most toxic it, uh, it's on every harm, very every harmful table <laughs> in every restaurant we go to if we ate the whole thing we get critically ill or die and yet we're trusted to buy as much as we want any time of day nobody's going to question it and we're trusted to use as much as we want nobody looks at us like we're crazy and we need it right you know but it can kill us <laughs> And, you know, you get cannabis, which wouldn't kill us, and especially in this tiny amount that salt will kill us, guaranteed if you eat enough. And it's a tiny, it's, it's relatively small amount, you know, I, I, I feel like we could be trusted with these kinds of things, you know, we're trusted to sell cleaning products that we're not drinking, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cannabis is, is, is among the safest products out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very benign. Uh, and yeah. so I just, I don't think it belongs on any schedule of, 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 of a narcotic because it, it's really not a narcotic. It's like a, a healing herb, uh, that has effects, psychoactive effects, but so does St. John's wort. So does, you know, uh, caffeine, which comes from, you know, uh, a natural sources. So I, I just, uh, I really don't, th I mean, I don't think, you know. I, we, we can talk about the For broad, sure. you know, decriminalization of, of, of substances across the board, but um, certainly cannabis has no place on the schedule at all. And like I said, there's all those things that are not scheduled uh, that are far more harmful. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, the, of, of, de of, of rescheduling, but I, I hope that we do deschedule. For sure. Thank you for, for touching on that because you've been involved in, in uh, you know, and a, a big proponent of the legalization movement for a long time, you know, and so I just wanted to hear it from your mouth. And uh, well, we know it, what we're doing. We don't want to hand over our, our industry to, you know, Pfizer and all these other companies. It's, we know what we're doing. We just need to be released from the overregulation to just do it. And we want, you know, we need banking, you know, we need, uh, we need to be treated like a regular industry because we're a billion, multi-billion dollar industry uh, that's going to be an even bigger one as long as, as soon as they take the, you know, the harness off. Yeah. Well, God willing, nobody will throw you in jail for you growing tomatoes that are too red. And uh, God willing, nobody will, uh, you know, throw a mother in jail for helping their child with what they needed and, and, and uh, you know, throw, throw somebody in jail for helping ourselves with what we need. And let's just say, God willing, we will uh, continue to remember that education is the key to understanding and we can share in, uh, in kind ways because we have to be the inspiration for people to want to jump on board and that's, you know, obviously adversity in a lot of ways helps us learn, um, though we, we need to be able to have tough conversations and it doesn't always mean imposing on somebody else, you know. And so just doing the work and uh, and and just being mindful of others, I feel like is just important when we're 
when we're going about this, because I've been in the courtroom and in, in the state capitals and, you know, I've seen people yelling at politicians and, and so on and so forth. And I don't know how that helps anybody want to jump on board. Obviously, somebody can go home and sit there and be like, wow, somebody yelled at me, you know, but how often does somebody change their mind because somebody yelled at them? I mean, I, I feel like we tend to rebel more as human beings in that way. And so we want to we want to we want reasons to care. And so, Danny, you, you give people um, you show people why you care. Thank you. And you 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 allow people to care because you open up a huge, you know, you 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 open up a big window into the cannabis world. And so definitely I, 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 I support everybody out there following Danny's projects and uh, we'll list them off and uh, you know, keep in touch. It's, it's been a real pleasure to share some time with you again and, uh, and do this work and, and uh, for the right reasons. So thank you for being a luminary in the community. And uh, as always, we share, the uh conclude this episode in fact let's just say um you can get those uh nightcaps at gorillahealer.org it's g-u-e-r-i-l-l-a-h-e-a-l-e-r.org and other uh beautiful products that are made with with care and also subscribe to the farms not farms podcast on spotify and apple music check out all the archived episodes at farmsnotfarms.org shout out buildasoil.com shout out everybody out there who's doing your part giving love to yourself and sharing it you know filling up another cup as well you are you are revealing the love in this world as well so thank you and let's conclude with sharing a miracle of life with a breath nice deep easy breath on the count of three one two three danny thank you so much Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. It has. May you stay protected and keep spreading the message of this beautiful plant and health and prosperity. Thank you. Love. Subscribe to the Farms Not Farms podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts.